um, you know, when we have these conversations, like people talk about racism, but they don't talk about economic warfare. Because they don't understand it. Yeah. They don't understand that someone is deliberately keeping you from organizing your economics. It comes in how you deal with housing. It comes in. I think there's access to loans, man, spe specifically well, well, for business. That, that's the critical one. That's the killer. The man. banking. That's the whole thing they call redlining, right? Where it says people that live in this place don't give them loan. That's all redlining. What people don't, when people hear redlining, they don't know what to talk about. The government makes maps, right? That bankers look at and says, okay, people who live in this zone, the green zone, we can get them loan. People in the blue zone, we can give them certain kind of loan. But the people in the red zone, we don't give them no loan. And that's almost always us. And if you can't get loans to open your business, if you can't get loans to buy the vehicles to attend your business, if you can't get loans to resupply yourself or to expand your business, then you're not going to thrive. You know, that's again, how do I provide food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security? So they force you to be, what, a consumer and a labor workforce for their enterprises instead of you being creators of your own enterprise. And you can't create your own enterprise if you don't have access to capital. And you can't have access to capital unless you have access to loans. And you can't give access to loans according to their standard unless you qualify in this credit rating. But you can't get the credit rating because nobody gives you the access to the loan, right? So, and then the craziest thing, the way they run the credit rating in America, say, if I got terrible credits, right, because I refuse to work in the system. I will not work in the system. My credit is rock bottom. It's been there for 40 years because I will not let you use that chain around my neck. I will find another way. But they, they, if you can't get access to the loans, then they tell you, okay, we'll give you a credit card, but we're going to charge you a higher interest. You're the one who can't pay now, Already. but I'm going to charge you the higher interest than somebody who can pay. That is stupid, but that is a debilitating way of keeping you out of the marketplace, keeping you from getting back. So what Dr. Anderson said, let's find our own ways to aggregate. Aggregate simply means to bring our monies together. That's where credit unions come in, in the black community. And credit unions could then evolve through amalgamation, again, coming together to become banks. And then the banks, of course, can service that community's interest around the acquisition of land, their ability to pay for the labor they need, and so forth. Land, labor, and to get the resources you need to facilitate the people in the land and the, and the labor force that you're working with. So we need to study, but not so much study. We need, because the average person knows exactly what they need. It's just that they can't get it. They know they need the, the, the labor. They know they need the, the opportunities for loans. But how can you get the, the loan, right? How do you get that opportunity? And if somebody deliberately realizing that, if I let this population of 40 to 50 million, 60 million black people develop economically, where I can then build relationship to Jamaica and to Trinidad and to Haiti, like they're building to Czechoslovakia, Italy, and, 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 and Switzerland, they would be in trouble. So it's up to us to recreate ourselves economically. And a lot of people are trying to do it. Let's not put our people down. Um, we spent last year better than $2 trillion because we made better than $2 trillion. There's only 11 nations in the world that had more surplus money than that. Okay. Our problem is ours is not organized. And that's what Dr. Anderson is talking about aggregating, organizing your money. And it isn't because we're not organizing. We probably, our problem is we are over-organized. There's too many black organizations. We can get rid of 50% of them. Yeah, sure. Huh? No, it's too much. I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. If we could resolve 50% of them, bring them together. Take the Soros, just the Soros and fraternities in the colleges. They're all operating as little individual groups. 
with the, my little pink and my little red and my little blue and da 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 and I got a little program going in Africa where I'm digging wells and I'm over here building a clinic in Africa and, and I got a community service to get young kids to school. What if all those sorters came together and expand all those programs? You'd have an explosion. And the successful collaborations you've had in your life, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, I take it both parties had to quell their ego to focus on the mission? Well, well, that's absolutely true in any kind of cultural developmental process, because that's what culture is. Culture is primarily the people's education system. The key in culture is unity. How do we work together in harmony? Unity and harmony. And that is when you establish what do we have? What is our content? I mean, what are the things we have that is useful for our development? And then you have to come together and determine what is our intent? What do we intend for the content? You know? And then you, you need a guiding tool. That's the thing we call culture. Some call it spirituality. Some call it indigenous religion. Whatever you call it, you've got to understand what its intent is. Is this intent to make sure you can provide food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security? yourself and your family and can you then bind that collectively with others so you can establish control over land labor and resources where you live so then you can get control of economic politics and culture where you live those elements I think it's about nine or ten of them if you can get those elements of economic politics and culture land labor and resources food clothing shelter and safety okay if you could pull those pieces together in some kind of ideological, but the first thing people do is like run to white socialism. I'm thinking, it doesn't work for them. Show me a white socialist state where it's working. All right? Let's go back to our own way. Let's begin to look deeply into Africa. Everybody identifies themselves with their people except us. You watch a TV show, and you see everybody's in kind of like expressing their cultural thing. The only, we express in white culture in some form or another. You know? No. How do we unite ourselves around the, the guaranteeing of food, clothing, shelter, safety, and security for ourselves and our family? Getting control of land, labor, and resources. Controlling economic politics and culture where we are. Malcolm described this as black nationalism. You don't have to use a label for it. Just do it. Find out how to best do it. And it has to start with, you can't say you can do your own thing and then have unity. You can't do that. That don't work. I can let you do your thing and you do your thing. That's disunity. And we're the only community that really talk about that, let everybody do their own thing. So you got the Muslim in that corner, the, the Baptist in this corner, the Jehovah's Witness in this corner, and Seventh-day Adventists in this corner in Africa ain't nowhere in the house and you're talking about you're black. Yeah. What do you, you know, like, really, how can you say you respect Africa, but there's nothing in your life African guiding you? The, at your core, the history of Africa and African peoples, wherever they've gone in the world, should be what's guiding you. That determines who your friends are and who your enemies are. History will tell you the story. It'll erase the mystery. You won't be confused about who I should ally myself with. And those people in the world you see dominating the world today is because they're not confused about who their friends are and who their enemies are. We can't even establish our fundamental identity. Oh, well, I got a little Irish blood, or I got a little British blood, or I got a little French blood. Okay, let me get the knife. Show me where the French one is and where the black one is, and we'll separate them out for you, and then you can make some choices, you know? But the fundamental is, we live in the United States of America. The fundamental is, the majority of the wealth is in the hands of whites. The fundamental is, where we do make our majority money in sports and in music, that is controlled fundamentally by white people. Most of our managers are white. Most of our lawyers are white. Most of our investors are white, right? So you make 
a billion dollars, and some white person tell you where to invest it, and he don't let you invest none of it but black people. Okay. And when you look like you're getting too big for your pants, they do like they do cotton, they try to figure out how to strip you of your billion. Real or unreal. You know. And they've been doing this for centuries. We can study it over and over. The same group of white people have been destroying us, managing us, ripping us apart, imitating us. And if we dare call their name, they accuse us of being anti this or anti that. 